Hello and welcome back to the What If series. Today we are on day 12 and today we're talking about what if you made time. I don't have time. I wish there were more hours in the day. I'm just too busy. I'll see when I can squeeze it in. Maybe tomorrow. How many times do you say these statements over and over again? I'm hazarding a guess it's quite a lot because I know that I've done it. But we feel time compressed and how can that be when we all have 24 hours in a day? We all have the same amount of time. So what if you made time? May I suggest to you that it's not lack of time, it's lack of prioritisation. So let me explain that to you. If we've all got the same amount of hours in the day, why do some people appear to be so productive and moving so far in their life whilst others really struggle with just the maintenance of day-to-day -day living? The first place that I'm going to look at is how are they spending their time currently? Did you know that the average American adult currently spends at least four hours a day watching television, most of that in the evening when they get in from work? And perhaps even more scarily is that research is telling us now that our youngsters are spending between two and nine hours per day on social media. Now, it's not enough to say that it's okay their children are growing out of it, because again, what research is telling us is that this habit is kind of a quick, you know, false fix, like a fix of a drug for children based on, you know, false social interaction, because it's not really social, you're not with people. But more than that, it's impinging on their ability to go and get a fulfilling job because they don't know what it takes to be really fulfilled. And lack of leadership in our workplaces is just kind of like cementing in the ever increasing problems we have with our youngsters and depression and not being able to, to interact socially. This sort of social anxiety is something that we need to address. But back to the case in point, where are you spending your time right now? Where, when you have a look at that, it's a direct indication of where you are placing your values. Now, this might be a new concept to you. Perhaps you've never been encouraged to think deeply enough about what's really, truly important to you and how you can amend your life accordingly to fulfill those needs. Because there is this sort of habitual belief, this, this, this behaviour, that unless you are switched on to something different, that we grow up, we go to school, we get a job, we do the nine to five, we get married, we have children, we bring those children up they go to university we get our life back and then you know maybe you'll have 20 years of retirement before you die so many people are living that life but it doesn't have to be that when you start to look at what's really important to you now ultimately what needs to be said is that you can have excuses or you can have a change now the benefit to having a time excuse is that it falsely justifies your lack of commitment to change I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to cook good food. I don't have time to visit my family. I don't have time to read a book. I don't have time for personal development. I don't have time to have a coach. I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. But that's just you justifying the fact that you're not prepared to have a look at what you can change to get what you say that you want. When we say I don't have time, let's be honest and take a look at what you're actually saying instead. So here's some examples for you. I do have time to put work before my health and my family. Watching soaps is more important to me than, ca than caring for my physical body. I do have time to spend all weekend on the sofa nursing a hangover. I want to spend more time watching pointless cat videos on social media than I do talking to my children. How does that sound, that different perception? Because like I just said, where you're prioritizing your, t prioritizing your time is related to the results that you're getting and what you're valuing. So if that makes you feel uncomfortable, this video is certainly for you. So what if you made time for what you value? Take a moment to think about what's really, truly important to you. Again, as we did in the previous video, let's imagine you've got six months left to live. What would be an absolute must for you? What would you regret not doing? Would you realize that you only see your parents a couple of times a week? Or a couple of times a month, sorry. Or perhaps you'd accept that you know your diabetes is because you prioritise food over eating well and going out for a walk every night. Or maybe that you notice that instead of always, always choosing worry, what you could do is find out, well, how do I stop worrying? Can I do meditation? Can I do mindfulness? Can I join a yoga class? Or perhaps you accept that for whatever reason, work was always your priority and now you don't even really know your children. So this can be quite an uncomfortable exercise to do. But let me also tell you something else. At the end of our day, we don't care about things. We will care about people, about the impact that we had or the legacy that we left. We will care about how much we loved and how much we will love back. 
We will think about the people that we've left behind, but not the money and the house and the things. So what if you made time for these important things right now? What if you made time for your health and stopped taking it for granted? What would you do? A better diet? More exercise? Stress relief? Jiggle your finances and get private health care? What if you made time for those that you love? Would you schedule in more sort of date times with them? Have a regular Sunday roast together? Turn off the TV and talk to each other? Maybe just send each other letters just to say, hi, I'm thinking of you and remove ourselves from the, the quick text or the quick message on Facebook. What if you made time for the things that you love, the things that light up your soul? The painting, the drawing, the singing, the walking barefoot on the grass, the laying on the carpet and cuddling your dog or your child. You know, watching something that just makes you laugh. Writing, even though you don't even know if you're a good writer or not. Doing vlogging, do, you setting up a YouTube channel. What are the things that really light you up? Because something else I want to tell you now is when you act in the inspired space of doing what you love, you have no concept of the ripple effect that's going out that will make massive changes to your life. I know that to be true. So what if you said, I'm doing something for me because I matter? Your whole life would change. What if you made time to create your life instead of living it by default? What would you do? Would you get a coach? Perhaps you'd start buying some self-help books or some kind of like personal development books to help you out. What if you dropped some of that crap that's sucking the living daylights out of you because you hate doing it? What would you be doing? Okay, what would you, would you start doing new things? Would you dedicate yourself to doing things that really excite you, apart from the kind of the mundane day-to-day -day things? But what would be different if you said, I'm creating my life now, I'm refusing to live it by default? When we decide to make time, it absolutely shows our values. None of us know when our time is up, and yet we walk around assuming that we've got tomorrow to make that big change. But we also know that many, very often that tomorrow becomes 365 tom tomorrows and those 365 tomorrows become another 365 tomorrows and before you know it, it's a year, five years, decades, a lifetime where nothing's ever changed for you because you thought at that point in time something else was more important. But for me, even though I know for some instances it means tough changes, it means leaving relationships, it means leaving jobs, it means having uncomfortable conversations, it means doing things that scare the living daylights out of you. We get that. I know that. But for me, nothing is more scary than the thought of getting to the end of my time and thinking, oh my God, I've just wasted that. It could have been so much better, so much different. So your exercise today is to go to the blog and exercise the time schedule sheet that I've given you. And this is where we have to get really honest, so I'm gonna be interested to see who's brave enough to download it. It's an instant download, you don't need to sign up for anything. And you're gonna spend seven days writing down exactly how you spend your time. Exactly, right? I don't want wee stops in there, but I do want TV time, I do want work time, traveling to work, working out, cooking, time with the children, etc. For social media, if you're in there for a block of time, you write that in, but every time you just go and check your notifications, whatever it is that you're doing, please put a stick, you know, like the gate thing, because every one of those equates to roughly about two minutes according to research. So you can get that download at my website, louisecartwright.com, on the blog as the same name as this, and there will be a link down below. This is the part where you have to get truthful. So you're gonna compare where you're spending your time and how that's equating to what you're seeing in your life. Take a look at your health, your happiness, your finances, your relationships, your personal growth, your sense of self, your job satisfaction. And then in those areas where you're really not totally satisfied, how much time per week are you spending on improving those areas of your life? Anything? Start to think about what's really important. Where do you say, if I had more time, I would? And ask yourself, if I didn't have long left, or do I really regret not making that a priority? One caveat to that is that people often say, well, I won't waste, I won't waste time in the gym. But what we need to remember is that we live, and in order to live, we need this physical body. We know as we get older, we lose muscle mass, and we know that exercise is also very good for our mental and emotional health. So some kind of physical activity should be a priority for you, whether that's walking, or yoga, or Pilates, or, or, or swimming, or snowboarding. It doesn't have to be heavy weights in the gym. It doesn't have to be senseless you know, uh, group classes. It can be something, but please value your physical body because it's the house that you have and now it's up to you what are you going to change what are you going to make time for what exactly will you do and when will you start and how will you measure the, cha the change in your experience 
So today's mantra is, it is powerful for me to prioritise my time according to what's important to me. It is powerful for me to prioritise my time according to what is important to me. Once again, I'm extremely grateful for you coming to watch these videos, coming over to my blog. Please do share, leave me some comments and feedback. It's always appreciated and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.